Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mama Kibibi and this is the secret life of my PhD. So the exam period can be a very, very stressful period for most of us. You know, um, there's so many things that we don't have control over. We're worried about how our performance is going to be. Will it measure up to our parents' expectations? If we have a bursary, will it measure up to our sponsor's expectations? Or even our own expectations of how we want to perform. So there's a lot of nerves. And then we're also worried about like the question, it's the, the exam itself. Like um, what are they going to ask in the exam? What's the lecturer going to ask? What type of topics are they going to cover? There's so many things that we worry about that we have no control over. And what that does is it stresses us out even more. And that just knocks our confidence. You know, the more stressed we are, the, the less confident we feel going into that exam. And feeling confident is very, very important when you're going to go write an exam. So that's why I want to talk about exam day rituals today. So a ritual, most people engage in rituals for the benefit of gaining control of a situation you'll find people saying like i can't start my day until i've run 10 kilometers you know they're like exercise people or i have to make sure that i read um a certain book or certain scriptures in the bible or i read um or i pray you know i cannot start my day without praying or meditating so um people have different rituals from different religions different practices different cultures and a ritual, what it does, a ritual helps us to gain control. One of the things it does, not the only thing, but one of the things it does is it helps us gain control of a situation that we would otherwise be losing control. Okay? So in that spirit, I think exam day rituals are good because like I said, exam period is a very stressful period. And one of the things you feel like is I am not in control. And what you want to do is... Do the little things that you can control to help boost your confidence so that when you walk into that exam room, you can perform at your best. So let's get right into it. So rituals. Your exam day rituals start the day before the exam. Now, this one is a tough one to do. I didn't do it when I was younger, but as I progressed in my studies, I realized, no, I need to do this. Stop working at a certain time um, uh, the night before or the day before, you know. I would say even the day before, stop working. But if you really feel like you need to study, then, you know, at 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock the night before, put your books away. If you really must study, stop it around 8 o'clock. And I know, you know, it's so tempting to want to continue studying even later, especially if you feel like you haven't studied enough or not feel like if you know you haven't studied enough because you know we do these things you haven't studied you only started three days before and you haven't covered the work and you're stressed but you know what going further and draining yourself and stressing yourself out trying to study all that work and cram all that work a few hours before the exam is not going to help you so even if you feel like you haven't studied enough or you know you haven't studied enough i still recommend that you please at a decent time stop working the night before the exam and what do you do you stop working and you prepare yourself for the exam you get um your pencils out you know you pack your pencils and pens um if you need a special calculator whatever it is that you need to write that exam you know what it is you know your rulers you pack that stuff away you get your clothes ready right because you're gonna need clothes hello so you get your clothes ready for the exam day get that ready and then you know things are different now with COVID. um some people are writing exams at home and some people are writing at venues so if you have a oops if you have a venue exam you are going to i mean not a venue exam if you're writing at home you're going to make sure that you've got your laptop that you've got everything charged everything's good to go and you've got enough data to write your exam and also check things like the load shedding schedule if there is load shedding at that time check that your neighborhood is not hit by load shedding at the time that you're writing and if it is what contingencies do you have in place a power bank whatever it is you know so make sure you have all of that stuff 
ready and you also communicate with your family you let them know or your roommates if you're staying with the guys in this time i really need to focus it is exam time i cannot be distracted right if you're writing at a venue you need to make sure that the next morning you arrive there early so that means if you're taking public transport make sure you get there early if you're driving remember there's traffic whatever it is get there early and I'm not a fan of hanging around an exam venue with people chatting about the exam just before you write. And I think maybe most people don't like that. But you can go find a little corner. Maybe you can read a book or a magazine, whatever it is, just to get your mind off the exam. Okay, but like I said in my video last week, the last thing you want is stupid problems. Like, I'm sorry I was late because I got stuck in traffic or I didn't know what time the exam was going to start. You don't want any of those things, right? So make sure you're early and ready for your exam on time. And the night before is a good time to prepare for all of that. Set your alarm and make sure when you go to your exam, you go with a watch, not one on your phone. You go with a watch, okay? Then, now that you are at the exam and you are ready to write, these are the things that I recommend you consider doing on every exam. It doesn't matter what subject you're writing. Number one, listen to the invigilator that's with your venue exam if it's not a venue exam and it's a written exam read the instructions carefully both invigilator and the instructions that are written they give you they give you the information that is very 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 important even if it's at a, a venue exam and the invigilator tells you in the instructions i still want you to read the instructions we as lecturers put that information down for you to read and make sure you know why for instance, the information in the instructions will tell you things like um, this exam consists of eight pages. This is page one of eight. OK, how many times have you heard people write an exam or a test and then they walk out and then a friend asks, oh, my goodness, did you see question five? And then the one guy's like, what do you mean question five? There was only four questions. And the guy's like, no, there was five. Why? Because they didn't know that there's, you know, a question five. They didn't check the number of pages and they didn't check the number of questions. So in the instructions, we always tell you these are the questions in the paper. This is the number of pages that we have in the paper. And make sure you address every single page in that exam. You know, so we even give you instructions like how you should answer the, the 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 exam for instance if you have a multiple choice like let's say you've got four questions and question one is multiple choice we give you instructions of how you should answer that multiple choice whether you should use the multiple choice sheet or whether you should answer the multiple choice in your script right read the instructions listen to the invigilators online or venue based same thing number two manage your time this is important now remember i said please have a watch there when you are writing so you can time yourself so if you have a um, a hundred mark question paper and you have a hundred minutes to write then you know it's a minute per mark and you allocate the time accordingly now the biggest thing the, the the most common thing that happens a lot of time with students is you're not comfortable with all the topics right you're only comfortable with let's say uh question one two and three you're not comfortable with question four and five you know that happens a lot and what you're inclined to do as a student is to okay i'm going to spend all my time on question one two and three and you know you're thinking that's what i know that's what i'm going to spend my time in and that's normal and that's fine and i don't um Go against spending more time on what you're comfortable with but what i do want to say is please 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 answer or make an attempt to answer every question in the exam even if you're not comfortable with question four and five make sure that you at least spend a decent amount of time looking at the required reading the required and attempting to answer question four and five and then once you've attempted to answer them if there's any time left over then you can go back and answer question one two and three why should you do that in an exam there's generally like these levels like there's like your easy marks your giveaway marks most most exams have that your giveaway marks and then there's those marks that are like yo you need to be like the top student to be able to get those marks you've really really worked hard right but in every question there's the easy marks right and if you don't attempt to answer 
question four and five, what you're doing is you're losing out on those potentially easy marks. It might not be topics that you're comfortable with, but it could be stuff that you know in that topic and you could have just gotten those easy marks. Remember, an exam, like it or not, is about getting the marks, okay? So please make an attempt to answer every question. And also, if you only spend time on question one, two, and three, and you don't spend time on three or four and five, you are assuming you're gonna get 100% on one, two, and three. But like I said, they are the difficult marks that are sitting in those questions as well. And you must really be on top of your game to like really, really, really get 100% in one, two, and three. And in most cases, it doesn't happen. We spend all the time on the questions that we think we know. We leave out the ones that we think we don't know. And we still don't get 100% in the ones that we attempted. So please make sure you attempt each and every single question. Number three, understand the required. I spoke about this last week i spoke about understanding the verbs that your lecturer in each and every single subject the verbs that your lecturer uses so if your lecturer asks you to list something please list don't discuss but if they ask you to discuss please discuss and don't list those are different things right are they asking you to calculate are they asking you to present information in a table whatever it is please understand what it is that the lecturer wants you to do. An exam is like an interview, a written interview. Your lecturer is asking you a question and they are expecting an answer from you. And they want you to answer the question that they have asked. They don't want you to just give them random facts just because you know a lot about that subject, right? So that's why it's important to understand the required and make sure you answer the required. Number four, present your work neatly. Now, I'm not saying you have to have the best handwriting in the world, but my goodness, you know, just present your work and remember somebody else that is not in your brain has to read your work and that person has to allocate marks to you. So please make sure that that person does not struggle to read your work. Don't make someone struggle to give you marks. Don't make them struggle to read what's going on in there. Uh -uh. So present your work neatly. And then number five, this is what an exam is all about. This is what you've been preparing for. An exam is about reading, reading the required, reading the scenario that's given to you, reading the information that's given to you. It's about thinking, thinking about the required, thinking about the scenario that's been given to you and then writing in response to that required. So it's a read, think and write exercise and then you repeat. That's all you need to do. Please don't, <laughs> when you don't know, let's say it's a 20 mark question and you've run out of things to say but you've only got two sentences and then you start recycling your answers. Please don't do that. You're just wasting time and you're probably irritating the marker. So you read, you think, and you write. You think about what you've read, and you think about what you're going to write, and then you answer the question. So those are my tips. Those are my exam day rituals. And maybe you have other things that you, you, know, you would do to help you stay on top of your exams and that you can apply to all of your exams. Please do do them. But guys, at the end of the day, the most important thing, what I want for you is I want you to pass. I want you to attain your academic goals. If your goal is to get a 50, I want you to get that 50. If it's to get an 80, I want you to get your 80. All right. So I want to do that. You need to be confident when you go write that exam. And like I said, when you have certain rituals, they help you stay confident. A confident student is a better performing student. Thank you guys for watching this video. I will see you next week. Bye-bye.